You and your spouse are driving cross-country for a job opportunity in another state, when unfortunate circumstances lead you to stopping in a weird abandoned town. The town has been taken over by a demon-worshipping cult of children, who have killed and sacrificed all the adults in the area, and these cult members want to sacrifice you to their god as well. In this fight for survival, do you think you have what it takes to stay alive? You're probably thinking to yourself, <sighs> Heck yeah, I'd survive. I'm so smart and brave. I kick those kids' butts and take a crap on the demon that they worship if it comes after me. I'm going to explain to you why you are wrong and that without plot armor to protect you like the main characters in this movie, you would be killed faster than you can count to three. By breaking down the story, the mistakes made, and why you would not survive the child cult or demon in the movie Children of the Corn. Time out. I want to quickly thank the kind people that take the time to like and comment on my videos. Your likes and comments really help with the YouTube algorithm and growing the channel. Okay, I just need 10 seconds to quickly advertise my online store to you, then I'll start the video. Check out MeBomber.com for the funniest clothing on the internet. MeBomber is sure to get you laughs and compliments. M-E-B-O-M-B-E-R makes a great novelty gift for friends and family. And check out my Patreon if you want to directly show your support. Links in the description. All right, let's start the video. The small fictional town of Gatlin, Nebraska has has been experiencing a drought and crop failure for the past year. The townsfolk turn to the Bible and hope to pray away the drought for a successful harvest. An event happens off-screen, in which a 12-year-old boy named Isaac gathered all the town's kids together in a cornfield, while the adults were in church, and within a couple hours of persuasive speaking, indoctrinated them into a religious cult, worshipping a bloodthirsty deity called He Who Walks Behind the Rose. The unsuspecting adults in Gatlin go about their day normally, and then suddenly collapse because their food and drinks were poisoned by the children of the town. The children butcher the poisoned adults and use their bodies as human sacrifices. This is the first reason you would not survive children of the corn. If you lived in Gatlin and are over 18 years old, you'd have no way to know beforehand that the kids in town have conspired together to poison what you eat and drink while you attend church. In the span of just a few hours, Isaac managed to both indoctrinate the children and execute the murder of all the town's adults, so there would be no opportunity before you're poisoned to either stumble upon information about the cult or be told what going on by a child that cannot keep a secret. If you were underage and chose to not join the cult, you would be outnumbered and killed by the other children before you could warn the adults of Isaac's plan. And if you were a kid who chose to not attend Isaac's mystery speech in the cornfields where he indoctrinated the other children into his cult, then you would not know that the adults were about to be poisoned until it's already happening. Then your only choices after the adults are dead is to either join Isaac's cult, run away to the nearest town of Hemingford that's over 19 miles away, or be killed. Back to the story. Three years later, Bert and his girlfriend Vicky are driving through rural Nebraska on their way to Seattle, Washington for an internship. A young boy in Gatlin named Joseph tries to run away from the cult, but is stabbed to death in the cornfields by a cultist named Malachi. This is the second reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. The cornfield that surrounds the town are policed by cultists and the supernatural powers of the demon that they worship, which makes defecting or escaping Gatlin almost impossible. Bert and Vicky hit Joseph's already dead body that was placed in the middle of the road by Malachi. Malachi is spying on Bert and Vicky from within the cornfields. Bert and Vicky put Joseph's dead body in their car's trunk and rush to the nearest gas station for a phone to call the police. The gas station mechanic's name is Dale, and he refuses to assist Bert and Vicky because the cultist children are only allowing him to live in exchange for his services and continued loyalty. Dale, without telling Bert and Vicky specifically what's going on, covertly helps them by advising that they avoid the couple mile drive to Gatlin and instead drive the 19 miles to the second nearest town of Hemingford. Bert and Vicky head towards Hemingford. Malachi and other cult members were spying on Dale and kill him for telling Bert to avoid driving to Gatlin. The road signs have been reoriented by the cultists to misdirect Bert and Vicky away from Hemingford and towards Gatlin. This is the third reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. The movie transpired in the 1980s before smartphones were invented. GPS service was first made available for civilians in 1983, but its use was not widespread because of major flaws until the mid-1990s. It's unrealistic to believe that you would have the foresight to purchase paper maps of all the back roads for every state that you're traveling through on your way to Seattle. You couldn't have planned for hitting a random boy in the middle of nowhere and then needing to take the nearby back roads to the nearest town to contact the police. So you'd have no way to avoid Gatlin when you're traveling down these unfamiliar roads because the cultists are manipulating the road signs. 
Back to the story. Isaac gives the children of Gatlin a religious speech about a vision he received from their god, commanding that they sacrifice the oncoming intruders, Bert and Vicky. This is the fourth reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. The cultists have spies and scouts surrounding the area, so they are expecting your arrival and have time to plan ahead and prepare traps. You would be at a disadvantage and likely be caught off guard by the murderous children in Gatlin. Back to the story. Bert and Vicky drive into Gatlin and it looks completely deserted. They park and enter the town cafe looking for a phone. The inside of the building is empty and run down. Cult members are spying on Bert and Vicky from outside while they investigate the cafe. Bert and Vicky notice children rummaging through their car, who then run away after being spotted. This is the fifth reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. In real life, there's no plot armor to protect you. The children should have enough common sense to understand that destroying your vehicle, which is your only source of transportation, is a good idea. Realistically, the cultists would have deflated your tires with a knife and pulled out the fuel lines and other vital parts from the engine area of your car so it can no longer operate. And while you're assessing the damage to your vehicle, the cultists would have surrounded and overwhelmed you with their superior numbers. Back to the story. Bert and Vicky chase after the cult members in their car, but the children get away. The couple enters an empty house to see if there's a working phone inside, but discover the phone cord has been cut. They hear a sound coming from upstairs, so they investigate and find a little girl named Sarah in a room playing by herself. They question Sarah about what's going on in this weird town, but the little girl's responses are vague and doesn't make sense. Sense, so Bert decides to search the town alone for an adult to talk to. After Bert leaves, cult members enter the house and capture Vicky. Later, Bert comes back to the house. His car has been destroyed, and Sarah tells him that Vicky has been kidnapped by somebody named Malachi. This is the sixth reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. In real life, you can't rely on plot armor dictating that the cult members don't have common sense. Realistically, the cultists would know that eventually Bert has to come back to the house, so they should hide around the property to corner and ambush him with their superior numbers like they did to Vicky. Back to the story. Bert runs out of the house and searches the town while yelling Vicky's name. Screaming so your girlfriend can possibly hear your voice and respond also signals to the cult members your exact location, making it easier for you to be ambushed. The children put Vicky on a cross and cheer for her impending sacrifice. Bert hears church bells ringing, so he looks inside the building and finds children passing around and drinking a cup of blood from a boy who just turned 19. Some quick background. The cult led by Isaac is sacrificing everybody over 18 years old to a deity who they believe to be God, but it's actually a demon that's misleading them, who can only fully manifest a physical form within the confines of the town's cornfield when the sun goes down. Bert confronts the children and mocks their creepy religious ritual, gets stabbed in the chest with a knife, pulls the knife out of his chest to ward off the children that are surrounding him, and then runs out of the church. The cult members chase after Bert. Teenage cult members with weapons catch up to and surround Bert. Malachi, who's the cult's second in command, shows up, screams at Bert, and the other children completely turn their heads towards Malachi. Malachi, which provides Bert the distraction and opportunity he needs to escape. This is the seventh reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. Real life humans are not so dumb that they make silly 80s movie cliche henchmen mistakes. Realistically, you would be dog piled on and beat unconscious or killed by this group of teenagers with hammers, machetes, and knives that have you surrounded. Back to the story. The teenagers chase Bert, but he manages to escape and runs into Job, who is Sarah's older brother, and the boy leads Bert to a secret basement hiding place that the other children don't know about. Job and his sister Sarah help treat Bert's knife wound and finally explain to him what's going on with the cult and their plans to sacrifice Vicky. Isaac argues with Malachi about his failures to capture Bert, which snowballs into Malachi finally getting tired of his bullcrap and usurping leadership away from Isaac. Malachi orders cult members to put Isaac on the cross to be sacrificed and that Vicky be taken off the cross so that he can use her as bait to capture her boyfriend Bert. Malachi walks around town screaming threats with Vicky as a hostage to try and bait Bert out of hiding. Job and Sarah lead Bert to a barn, where he can safely spy on the cult members in the cornfields. Bert grabs a metal pipe to use as a weapon and sneaks up close to the children in the cornfield. The deity the cult worships appears and absorbs Isaac, who's been presented as a sacrifice on the cross. Bert runs out of his hiding spots and smacks Malachi in the head with a pipe to release Vicky from his grasp. Vicky reluctantly obeys Bert's order to run away to the nearby barn and leave him behind. Bert stays in the cornfield as a distraction so Vicky can run away. This is the eighth reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. 
there's over 30 cult members in this cornfield that should have dogpiled on Vicky and Bert at the same time. The children did not need to make a choice to allow Vicky to run so they can focus on Bert. For some reason, the children surrounding Bert stand idly by as he lectures them on the error of their ways and how misguided their religion is. While talking, Bert is tackled from behind by Malachi. The two wrestle and Bert manages to overpower and punch Malachi unconscious. This is the tenth reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. There was no logical reason for the surrounding children to allow Bert and Malachi to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Bert should have gotten ganged up on. Isaac reappears and is possessed by the demon that the misguided children have been worshipping. The demon Isaac chokes Malachi to death. The children and Bert run away in fear. Everybody hides inside the barn to escape the heavy winds and thunderstorm the demon created. Bert questions Job on how they can defeat the demon, and the kid hands Bert a torn out Bible page that the last remaining adult was carrying who was trying to destroy the demon before Malachi killed him. Vicky figures out that the highlighted verse on the torn out Bible page means that the key to defeating the demon is to burn down the cornfield. Everybody works together to find a cigarette lighter, a rag, an empty bottle, a hose, and the right connector attachment for the gasoline tank that Bert plants they used to burn down the cornfield. Bert runs out into the cornfield, trips and falls, and is attacked by corn stalks that the demon is controlling. Job runs into the cornfield and pulls out a pocket knife to cut Bert free from the demonic corn stalks wrapping around his body. Bert and Job work together to attach the gasoline tank's hose to the cornfield sprinkler system, plus open the necessary valves, and finally turn the sprinkler machine on. The sprinkler system soaks the cornfield in gasoline. This is the 11th reason you would not survive Children of the Corn. The demon has already demonstrated that it can possess people. It still has control of a possessed Isaac and possibly possessed Malachi too. It's shown the ability to control thunder and strong winds. And it's able to manipulate corn stalks to attack and grab things. So why did the demon not do anything while Bert and Job were trying to get the sprinkler machine to work? Realistically, there were countless ways the demon could have attacked Bert, Job, or the sprinkler system to stop their plan. Back to the story. The demon appears in the form of a red cloud of energy and slowly travels towards Bert and Job. Bert lights a bottle filled with gasoline on fire like a Molotov cocktail and throws it into the cornfield. The demon is killed by the fire spreading in the cornfield. Bert and Vicky decide to adopt Sarah and Job, and the group begins walking the over 19 mile distance to the nearest town of Hemingford. That's the end of the movie. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. I got more how to beat and why you wouldn't survive videos coming up for your favorite movies and TV shows, so stay tuned. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next video.